Hello, welcome to the Thursday, September 30th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Today we have an interesting bug to start out with in GPSD. GPSD is a GPS daemon used to decode GPS signals and often used to synchronize time services. The bug will be triggered on October 16th, so in about two weeks, and it will cause your time to go back by about 20 years, 1,024 weeks. Now, why 1,024 weeks? That's a little bit an oddity in the GPS design, the time that you actually receive, the time signal that you receive from a GPS satellite has two parts. One part is the number of the week, and well, uh, historically, that was expressed in 10 bits. So you have 1,024 different weeks available. That caused, of course, occasionally in rollover, and uh, GPS software is accounting for that. In this case, they just sort of messed up at the time when they have to actually account for this rollover, and the result is that in two weeks on October 16th, GPSD, if you have a buggy version, will go back by two weeks. GPSD versions 3.20 up to 3.22 are vulnerable. 3.23.1, which was released just about a week ago, September 21st, is the first version that is fixed. So make sure that you update, you have two weeks, the updates should be available for common uh, Unix distributions. Of course, a lot of these uh, NTP servers are running on little appliances and such, and an upgrade may not be as obvious as for your normal Unix systems. And we do have an interesting vulnerability in Apple's AirTags. Now, of course, uh, shortly after they came out, uh, there were people taking them apart and looking at modifying firmware and the like. The vulnerability that we have now is actually a lot simpler. It's a simple stored cross-site scripting vulnerability and also a very typical oversight in that the application that you're using on your phone in order uh, to modify the URL that will be displayed to a user who found your AirTag only accepts a number. Turns out, well, the API that's actually being used to modify the value, it accepts everything. So typical sort of client-side input validation here. And with that, an attacker could add, for example, JavaScript uh, to the URL and then cause stored cross-site scripting on Apple's website as a user is scanning an AirTag. The way it's supposed to work is that you enter a phone number. If a user finds an AirTag, they can scan it. They'll be redirected to Apple's uh, web page and the phone number will be displayed. So they are able then to call the owner of the AirTag. But if the attacker decides to inject JavaScript or other malicious content, then the user scanning the AirTag will be presented with the malicious content, potentially be redirected to a malicious website, or even then confronted with a login page, which may actually look pretty authentic at that point, because after all, they scanned an Apple AirTag. The security researcher who found a vulnerability, Bobby Rauch, uh, did uh, report it uh, to Apple back in June, but up to now it has not been fixed yet, which is why he made it public. In recent years, there were a number of high-profile attacks, uh, ransomware, uh, for example, some attacks against uh, Ukrainian utilities and such, that used as original entry point insecure VPN configurations, quite often weak or compromised credentials. To assist organizations in fighting this threat, the NSA, together with CISA, now published a fairly short and to the point guide in how to securely configure your uh, VPNs. And of course, multi factor authentication is in the list. Also, for example, just uh, using strong credentials and strong cryptographic protocols. There's a longer list, but overall, the guide is actually refreshingly short, so uh, shouldn't be that hard to take a quick look at it to see if there's anything that you can do to harden your own solution. 
And if you are reviewing the security of Android applications, a quick heads up, uh, Facebook did open source an interesting security tool they're calling Mariana Trench. Uh, this uh, tool is designed to assist in the analysis of uh, Android and Java applications. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.